Hello, hello, hello. This is Tom from Tom and Ruth Philippine Adventures. Today I'm out here in town and I'm over here at Ollie's doing my thing. Waiting on Mr. Ollie, but not really. We came to town today and so I'm going to explain why we came to town today. I've been to this restaurant twice today. waiting on our R and uh, B-Boy to come. I guess he bought a tuck tuck and so he's gonna bring our R here if it's my screen because I already had my Sunday. Uh, banana split, I'm sorry. I said I said Sunday, I meant banana split. Why am I in town? The uh, the hose popped off my van and the it started to overheat. I did not know it, no big deal. Come to find out the reason the hose popped off, common sense tells you, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? If a hose pops off of any kind of vehicle, the first thing signs you there's back clamp, bad hose, right? Or number three, thermostat. No worries. It's a three, four, five hundred dollar, five hundred dollar, two, three, four hundred peso item. No big deal. I said, okay, but I don't know where the thermostat goes to that motor. I can do it. I can't get my hands in. Barely got my hands in to fix the hose. The reason the hose popped because it built up pressure in there and it would not let the uh, thermostat would not let the water go through down to where it needed to go in the engine. And I knew that. So on the way down today, I, I had to stop a couple times with the car relax a minute, cool off before I restart it back up again. Long story short. <clears throat> That multi-cab, or not multi-cab, that uh, DW, what is it, DW64A or whatever it is motor, that's the it's, it's Suzuki motor, 66 horse, uh, they have to take the time and they have to pull out uh, the motor. They have to pull out the motor in it. So they're gonna have to pull out the motor of this vehicle in order to get it to run. So, here's the thing. That's something you always got to be prepared for. It's going to have seven days, six days, to take out the motor of that vehicle and then pop it back in. <coughs> and they're going to take it out. Now I have to tell them how to check the head gasket and check the pistons while they have it out because they take the motor out completely. Make sure everything's good in that room. Uh, fix the throttle body, any of that stuff needs to be clean, uh, turbo clean, the whole nine yards. And uh, I have that done, and then that way, when you, uh, when I put it back together, it's going to be pristine. And as they're in there, I said, uh, anything else that you find, let's, let's see if you get that squirt away. A pristine uh, motor is almost good. He said he looked at it so far, and they had it all apart, front end apart. They're getting ready to drop the motor out of it. I mean, they're pretty pretty quick got three or four guys working on it. 13,000 pesos includes the labor, all the pieces, parts. It takes a, they're going to take off the head gasket. You've got to look at the pistons. Anything else needs to be done in that. And uh, things of that nature. It's a simple motor. Those things are very simple. You can find a motor on those pretty simply. Uh, and those things run like a top. You see those are the best motors to run. You see those get two, three, four hundred thousand miles off and take care of them. That one has a hundred 60,000 miles on it, so it's it's a good motor. So long story short, we're gonna uh, take that, it's gonna take whatever, four, five, six days, take that apart, put it back together, and then we're gonna, and then uh, get it back again. So that's the story today. So a simple thermostat, it's gonna cost me $13,260. You think about it, $260, they won't even look at a motor in USA for 260 bucks. I remember having a motor taken out of my car, my truck, because the stupid Jiffy Lube, you know, 65,000 miles on a brand new truck, they forgot to put the gas cap, the oil cap back on, thought I had to drop the motor. Motor kapook. So I had to have a new motor put in that, a couple thousand dollars. It cost me another thousand or two for them to even think about doing it. So there you go. Um, here, they're gonna drop the motor whole nine yards. I told them to check emissions control on it. 
uh, any oxygen sensors or things that are bad. Uh, adjust any kind of, I told them that if I check the, the fuel intake, all that stuff, make sure it's all good. And make sure it's receiving good gas. Just whatever needs to be done on. Because now's the time to do it. You got the motor out, why don't you look at everything and then put it back in. And it's going to change the oil in it and all that stuff. I asked about synthetic oil compared to regular oil. He said, to be honest with you, don't use synthetic right now. Always use regular oil in it because that's what the motor's used to. You start using synthetic. Even though it's slippery and slicky and everything is the best thing, uh, it's not good for the, the parts of that age of that motor. I didn't know that. I've been told that by two or three mechanics already. All right, so uh, that's the story today. I may add on a little bit more to the story. Uh, the guys are waiting on me in there, so I'll stop right here.